for joining us for tonight's special unmasked conversation. Tonight, we chat with artists for whom creativity is their livelihood in every sense of the word. We discuss how the COVID-19 pandemic has brought both positive and negative outcomes in their life and what they're doing now to navigate their current normal. Before we get started, please be sure to click that subscribe button below the screen. And also be sure to visit us at gantcenter.org to be updated on all things Gantt Center related. Our two minute audience survey is currently linked in our YouTube chat. If you had not had the time to take the survey, please um, do so now. Um, the YouTube chat is also available for any questions or comments that you have throughout the conversation. We will address the audience survey results as well as audience questions in the second half of the program. Joining us tonight to facilitate the discussion, we welcome creative consultant Dave Butler. Dave creates opportunities and drives conversation around the necessity for investment in creative industries in North Carolina. Thank you for joining us tonight, Dave. And please share a little bit of information about yourself and your current work. Definitely. Uh, thank you for the intro, Feeney. Thank you guys for having me. Shout out to the Gantt Center for putting this program on. Uh, my name is David Butler. Some folks know me as Dave Has Wings. I'm a Charlotte native, born and raised here. Um, uh, I'm a little all over the map with a lot of the work that I do. So I kind of put it under creative consultant. I work in arts, education, and culture specifically. Um, you know, my day job is working for a retail company, the Whitaker Group. We have a store social status, which is in the Plaza Midwood neighborhood, and I handle all the community engagement across the country. Um, we have four different store brands with about, um, we have about close to 20 stores in about 15 cities around the country. So I do community engagement, working with a lot of different people across a lot of different industries. I'm also a founding member of Hugh House, which is a local, um, well, we're based here in Charlotte. Uh, we do a lot of work as a creative agency, and then we also are working on building our nonprofit arm as well. So shout out to everybody who's been tapping in with Hugh House since we were founded back in September. Um, I definitely want to take some time. It's not about me. I want to get into bringing in these panelists. Uh, we're going to have an amazing discussion tonight. Um, so I want to start by bringing up Ms. Bree Stallings, um, who's also another Charlotte native. Um, I'm, I'm all about pushing against that narrative that we're, we're not around. There's plenty of natives around. You just got to look in the right place. So I'll let Bree introduce herself. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Dave, and thank you, Athene. We are definitely not unicorns. There's like 12 of us here, and we got to stick together. I'm a fourth generation Charlotte native, so that's something to be proud about. I've definitely watched it grow and evolve over the years. But um, 100%. Yeah, like Dave said, I am a uh, Charlotte area um, artist, illustrator, and muralist. I also write curriculum for a lot of the major institutions, including the Gantt Center. Um, one of my sculptures, Unwanted Southern Conversations, is on loan there, and I teach a lot of classes all around town and in my own studio called The Learning Lab, where I do one-on-one -on -one lessons with a wide variety of ages and skill-based levels. Dope, dope, dope. So, I mean, we're going to be touching in, tapping in with a lot of creatives that kind of touch uh, various ends of the creative spectrum. Next up, I'm going to bring on Miss Whitney Austin. Um, she has her own private practice and it also has a gallery as well, so she's a gallerist. Um, so we'll allow Whitney to tell you a little bit more about herself. Hey, how's everyone doing? Super doing good, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Um, my name is Whitney Austin. I'm actually from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, but I've lived in Charlotte um, this time around for about six years. I've been a full-time artist for the last four. Um, but since I've been a full-time artist, I've opened two art galleries. 
um, and have grown my social media platform for those of you that follow me on social media between Instagram and Facebook. Um, but I pretty much host paint classes around the country. Um, I host my own art shows and just a lot of different other events. I have, um, of course, known the Gantt Center. It's kind of been like second home for me. Um, I've had my own art shows there. And then, of course, my art has been sold in the Gantt Center um, in their first level shop. So I'm so excited to talk today. And thank you again for allowing me to be a part of this. Super excited. Definitely, definitely. Um, our next panelist, last but definitely not least, um, worked alongside this brother for Welcome to Brook Hill, was uh, blessed to do the exhibition design and, and curate a good portion of the exhibit for Welcome to Brook Hill. It's Mr. Alvin C. Jacobs Jr. Um, I'll allow him to introduce himself and talk about, you know, how this has affected, how this uh, pandemic has affected him and what he's got going on uh, right now during this time. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Um... Alvin C. Jacobs Jr., uh, photographer, image activist, uh, native of Rockford, Illinois, Whitney, Midwest. Um, man, should I like go along with that or just like or just like leave it at that part? Um, like, Not, yeah, man, give us a little something, man. Give us a little yeah, something. A little um, artist in residence at the Gantt, um, photographer at um, uh, the Gantt, well, gosh darn it, uh, the Welcome to Brook Hill uh, exhibition that uh, you curated. I mean, man, art is life. You know what I mean? Um, it's It's everything that I do is done with a camera. And I kind of think about um, what do I do outside of that, you know, as if I was a construction worker, you know, if I was a, um, a builder, you know, what would I do if I couldn't build? You know, would I be something else? No, I'd be looking for more things to build. And that's exactly kind of what's happening right now in my life as a photographer. I'm looking for more things in my field, not really anything else because there's nothing wrong with doing this. 100%, 100%. And uh, speaking on that, on that, on that topic of, uh, you know, this is what everybody does. This is what we all do. We all do creative things for a living. Um, so I'm going to start with this first question, which is just kind of, uh, you know, with everything, obviously the pandemic has shifted things up. We can't go out the house like we, like we, like we need to, to be able to shake and move. We used to be in the streets and making things happen and, you know, creating your own environment, creating your own work. Um, how have you guys started to pivot with your individual practices um, during this time? How has, how have you guys shifted a little bit to either, you know, either create new work, start new bodies of work, you know, finding new clients, like how, how was the, what was the, what was the initial pivot for you guys? And anybody can go. Don't be scared. Go Whitney, well, go I'm ahead. Yep. <laughs> um, pretty much for me, the, the majority of my business has been online. Um, and honestly, through this whole time, just being real with you guys, my creativity has went down the, down the drain. I have been so um, overwhelmed I felt like there's more pressure on us to create and there's even more pressure to create masterpieces. And you know, mm -hmm. that everyone's watching, I feel 10 times more because everyone's at home. So I feel like it's our really our duty to uplift people and just having that pressure has really, it's, it's affected me. And so the flip side to that is with me knowing that I have been able to receive a lot more support from my followers and my clients saying, you know, Whitney, don't worry. You know, we're, we're still going to be here even when this virus passes. If you want to use this time as a time to just relax and not necessarily feel like you need to create 24-7, that's okay. So now I'm at the point where I'm focusing more on my online business and creating other ways that I can still connect with my followers by hosting like um, online paint classes or offering some type of contest or just ways to, you know, engage and still, you know, have that connection with them. Got you, got you. Bri, uh, AJ, anybody? I think, uh, I mean, what hasn't changed and like forced us to change during this time, absolutely everything has been completely in flux. Just like on the basic, like non-abstract level, like I didn't have access to my studio space. Um, I went through a period where of like 10 days where every day I got an email where like a job was being canceled or a commission was being pulled back. And it was just like, oh my God, like what? it just kept coming and so everything just it caused me to take like a great pause which in some ways I'm really grateful for because I was I know that I was going at a pace that was unsustainable I had a really mm -hmm. amazing year in 2019 I did two solo shows and um the largest mural in Gaston County and like I did, I did six months of like this class in Atlanta and it's just like I was all over the place and 
I, I wanted to like keep that trajectory going forward, but I was just on a one-way street to like a mental breakdown. So it's it's a small like blessing, but this isn't the way that I expected that package to come wrapped. And, oh no, a hundred percent. I'm grateful, but it's been like a it's been an interesting uh, a interesting way for me, and it reminds me a lot because I come from a place of poverty, and now like I've, I've I'm pulling on un unemployment, which is interesting. Um, but it just reminds me of like being in that. I think it, it triggers me in that way that makes me feel like, and I'm not painting at my studio, I'm painting on the floor of my apartment. And I just feel like, am I back 10 years ago in my career? That's not mm -hmm. the truth, but it feels like it. And the mind knows, but the body remembers. And that's what it feels like. It feels like, oh gosh, here I am again. And like Whitney said, like just trying to find some creativity and make something beautiful. It's like, I, it's hard to when I'm coming from a place of like fear and uncertainty to like find that in myself. But um, with my clients, they've been they've been so graceful and amazing. And um, I was talking to my friend Elizabeth earlier today, and she said that a realization that we both have had during this time is that patience is a gift that you can give somebody. And our clients have been like so patient and sweet and kind, and I can return that gift, and we can just be like sweet to each other. Um, while we all navigate these things. So it's been a it's been a harsh adjustment, but it's been one that I'm um, already grateful for and we're not in the hindsight part of it yet. Got you. Alvin, what you got for us, man? How you feeling? What's, what, what's the pivot been like for you? Bro, if I was just a photographer, life would be interesting enough just as an artist, but as an activist, I'm absorbing mm -hmm. all of this information and if it was just about creating, I would just go create, right? But I'm paying attention to what our government is doing. I'm paying attention to how this is affecting everyone around me socioeconomically, right? It's not just like, hey, we can't go outside. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm looking at other countries and what the government is doing for those folks and how millions of people are, 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 are being forced to, to choose between their health, right? And their livelihood, how your bills are due right? The $1,200 or $1,300 or $1,500, whatever it was, I didn't get, right? Is all that we have available. So we're being forced back into this structure that's never served us. So again, as an activist, my work has always been um, centered around the people. You know, most of it isn't pretty. It's, it's, it's triggering, you know, to me. So as I'm being triggered, right? I mean, my entire wall behind me, you know, is triggering work, but it's, um, when I think about what we're being forced to do right now, you know, as an artist and how are you going to continue to pay your bills um, if you're going to remain a full-time artist, because that's what I am. Kind of what I touched on before, um, you know, if you're a painter or you're a plumber or, um, you know, you, you're, you're an automobile mechanic, you know, what you do, you work on cars. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're an English teacher, guess what? You teach English. You're not a English teacher and a plumber. And no one's looking at you to be a plumber. But as artists, people keep telling us, well, you know, why don't you do something else? They don't tell anyone else that, right? They don't tell anyone else that. Why don't you do something else? You know, may maybe you could, you know, do something else. What if this is all I knew how to do, right? If I was a PhD um, a tenured professor someplace, right, and my university was closed, and for whatever reason, the ends aren't meeting, you're not telling a tenured professor, right, to go wait tables, you're just not doing that, but that's what they tell us. Well, maybe you could do something else. Maybe you should do something else. This is what I do and there's nothing wrong with what I do. So as an activist though, I'm looking at some of the breakdowns in, um, in the structure you know, of our communities and how individuals are being forced, not just out into the streets, you know, but back into a, um, an environment that isn't safe, which ultimately is going to run this thing right back around um, for the second phase. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things uh, definitely take a turn and take a shift. Um, so what are, I'm gonna ask you guys this, what are some, have you guys seen anything interesting specifically within the arts or creative industries? Has there any, has anything piqued your interest within our industry that you're seeing that you would like to highlight or that you think would be, um, you know, good for people to know or look out for? Like, what are you guys seeing, I guess, as like as a trend or anything like that? What you got, Whitney? I would say, something that I noticed um, immediately that was really just natural, you know, through social media, you know how you kind of have like your art friends, even though you might never have met them before. Just because you're an artist, there's like this special connection that we all carry like this superpower, right? And we've really came together. Artists that I was just, you know, sort of communicating with prior to this, 
now we have each other's phone numbers, we're FaceTiming each other. And that alone is just like, wow, you know, I mean, artists from overseas that I'm, you know, cool with now. And I'm like, what are you working on over there? Or it's fine when it with me, like, you know, and th just having that additional support from artists is priceless. It's priceless because, you know, sometimes as artists, we might, you know, have a little jealousy at some other artists because you're like, man, I wish my work was like that. Or, man, I wish I had a business like theirs. But we're putting all that to the side and we're like, look, I'm having a hard time creating over here. What are you working on over there? And no one else on earth can really tap into that. You know, yeah. I mean, like the fact that I've been able to bond with these other artists has really, it's really just helps me on another level. So, I mean, I've seen that. And then I've also seen, like I was saying earlier, a lot of my followers just supporting artists in general. I mean, the, I mean, just from what I've seen, I personally feel that people are buying more art, which is mind blowing to me. Um, I didn't expect that, honestly, coming into this. Um, but when people are staying at home now, you know, they got more time to just kind of be around. People are spending money on other things that they usually wouldn't spend. And my work and other artists' work is being tagged in people's homes. And I'm like, wow, people are people are, are still supporting artists regardless, you know? And, and just to, to see that, because I really thought that we were the last thing on the list, you know, because people have bills to pay. They, you know, they're trying to figure out who's going to watch their kids now. And the fact that they're still finding a way to support us is just amazing. So I'm very appreciative of that. And I'm sure other artists are as well. Definitely. I mean, I think in times of crisis, a lot of times you'll see where arts is really the first thing that people turn to, right? Like Spotify's numbers are up, Apple's numbers are up, Title's numbers are up, people are at home, they're, they're watching Netflix. And a lot of times we like to take these things out of context and say, like, they don't feel like art, right? Like we think about it in this kind of, um, you know, traditional context. Um, but really, it's like art is really the first thing people turn to um, right. during these times, you know, to, to help them get through their day, help them deal with shifts and changes and, and, and you know, row their emotions as well, corral their emotions as well. Um, so, I mean, with that, kind of talking about emotions and all of that kind of stuff, like how has this shift, I know we kind of hinted on it with the first question, but how has this shift kind of affected you guys kind of mental and emotional health? Um, you know, how, what, what have you got, have you guys, you know, you're, you're connecting with a lot of other artists as well. So, you know, talking to your friends and your other creative friends, like how, how's the, what's the mental barometer, the emotional barometer of most of the creative folks you're, in a, you're uh, interacting with and yourself as well? I think it went with an ebb and flow, and I think at the beginning, um, the beginning, <laughs> mid, <laughs> mid, mid March, um, and and towards when people were kind of winding down and going into their homes, there was this explosion of art making, and I think that was probably just people having like the mental space to to make and like be be more present in their bodies and in their families and in their homes, and so like a lot of people doing like hundred day projects and like catching up on big things to send out, which is what I did. I was like. Sorry, everyone I, who's still waiting on like six months ago stuff, like, here you go. Um, and I, there was this explosion of art making. And then I think that died down. And, and I feel like the energy shifted into something more serious. And people were were taking their business very seriously and, and kind of alluding to what Alvin said. I feel like I put on like my, my business person hat. And it's like, you know, if, if I want anyone to treat me seriously as a business person, I have to treat myself like a business. And this has to run as a business. I can't just like drain my bank account and like hope and like by the time all this clears up that people are gonna want a mural. And so the energy I think collectively shifted into that. And, and we're all um, like Whitney said, just kind of like going into each other and being like, what are the resources that y'all have for this? Or can you help me with like a profit loss sheet because I'm, I'm confused or, you know, and that, that has been really eye opening and sweet, but I, I think we've been going through these kind of ebbs and flows of like creation and then like serious business work. And I'm curious to see like what comes from that and um, when this is done. I'm gonna say- Shout out to my CPA. I've been definitely taking care of my taxes during this time. <laughs> for <a> sure, <laughs> go for it. Go for it, Alvin. Um, I'm probably gonna say something that's gonna be a bit controversial, but if you think about it, guys, mm -hmm. um, right now, if at any other time, right, if we weren't professionalizing our business, We've been forced to, you know, I mean, kind of what, what, what um, Bree was just saying, if you don't have your paperwork in order, there's resources that you don't have access to, right? So whether you made, you know, a whole bunch of money or a little bit of money, you know, under the table, if it's not on paper, you're just literally out by yourself right now. So we've been forced to, which is a great thing, 
right? This, right. This, 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 this pandemic is a mess, right? But a lot of smaller businesses are being forced to professionalize their practices, which is going to set them up for success, you know, in the long run. Um, a lot of us have time right now. Um, if uh, you remember, Dave, I was in a tragic accident in November, right? Like yeah. I almost died, you know, um, vehicle was totaled. I was rear-ended by a drunk driver. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, like I'm just now recovering, right? Mm -hmm. And then this thing. So um, sometimes you're placed in a position that you have to work harder, even though all you want to do is rest. You know, mm -hmm. you want to lay down, you know, you want, you know, people to have empathy, but guess who doesn't have empathy? You know, um, your responsibilities, you know, whether it's right. your mortgage, whether it's your rent, you know, whether it's your um, responsibilities, you know, from your children, you still have to get up every day and create and you still have to be um, an active member of your community and be there for other folks. You know, if you can't, if I can't be there for Bree, right, or if I can't be there for Whitney, how can I expect them to be there for me? Right. If I can't accept a phone call, right. Um, Brie might call me crying. She never has. I'm just saying. I might call her crying. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing, right? We have to be there for each other. And, you know, kind of what um, Whitney was saying, we're showing up for each other because we're kind of the only ones who understand what we're going through. This is rough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's rough for a right. lot of folks. And money doesn't remove, you know, the pressure of um, the lack of your ability to create. Right. Definitely. So even with that, in terms of showing up for each other and, and dealing with relationships and things of that nature, um, what is the relationship and temperature been like with uh, with clients, with, you know, future engagements? Um, you know, are people kind of like completely pulling the plug? Are you guys in a holding pattern? What has business been like? And I know, Whitney, this is kind of interesting for you, considering you have your own space. So what are, what are you guys experiencing with, uh, you know, with clients, commission work, et cetera? Like I know I personally had um, from my private art practice. With my analog photography stuff, I had an exhibition push from May to November. So, like, what what it was it been you guys' experience with your um with your clients and the gigs that you had lined up uh, during this time? Um, well, I would say because the majority of my business is online, I, I have been really blessed to be able to just communicate with them, you know, via email or you know, I'll make a post on my page and say, "Hey, you guys, you know, your orders are going out," um, and. It's crazy. Sometimes you just don't think of how the little things are connected. Um, so I actually print my artwork myself, the, my orders, I print them um, in-house. So the printers, the, you know, the, the ink, the print heads, the paper, all of these things come from somewhere else. So that business is also being affected by the virus. And so if they're having a delay from shipment from China, then that means that my orders are delayed. So, you know, me passing this information on to my customers saying, hey, you guys, the, the uh, ink is coming a little late, coming three or four days late because the suppliers have issues and they've just been so understanding. Um, but honestly, as far as my gallery, it's crickets right now. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. going on there, obviously, my, my goal was initially to say, oh, this virus, I'm going to take advantage of this time. I'm going to just fill this whole gallery with new art and I'm going to have an art show the day that everything Right, but that's unrealistic. And that's one thing that I have to keep in mind is to not let the pressure of just work, work, work really put me in a depression where you feel like I need to be more productive. I need to create 80 new originals. I need to do this, I need to do that. And I've learned to just really kind of take this time as a way for me to get my business in order or to create other streams of revenue. Because I'm sure that, especially as artists, the majority of us create here and with our hands. Mm -hmm. When those things, sometimes we get tired, we get overworked, we need to have a backup. Right. Whether it's prints or different classes and considering that everything is online, especially right now, I mean, when I mean I appreciate Instagram and a website more than ever now, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, because I, I do have friends that have other businesses and to know that their products, you know, are not, um, doing as, you know, as, as well online, I'm just like, man, I, you know, we, we, we can't take internet for granted. We, we can't take social media for granted. We can't take our creativity for granted. The fact that we can make something on Monday and be able to sell it at the end of the week and to be able to post mm -hmm. on social media, we still have a way to make income. And so, like what Brie was saying, it's like, girl, I feel you because it could be so hard, you know, like she was saying how she's back in, back in her house painting. I'm doing the same thing. And it's like, <laughs> easy, but sometimes you kind of need that, you know? 
sometimes we kind of need that to be like, you know what? It's okay. I, I, all I need is, is two hands and a brush and I'm good, you know? So sometimes we got to step back and reevaluate things. Yeah, I mean, this, this whole experience is, it's, it's, it's bittersweet. I can definitely say that. Yeah, I completely agree. I think, um, and we had talked a couple of days ago about it, but I had a mural client um, from Atlanta, like wait to the last minute to pull out of the job. And so that just felt like so shattering because when I take on big jobs like that, that require a huge chunk of time, like I don't schedule anything else. I've already put in right. 50 or more hours of like unpaid design work. I mean, like it's just this mm -hmm. relationship and I'm going back and forth. I'm kind of consulting for them, helping them to find buildings and other stuff. And, and they had told me like out of a, a fear-based place, like go buy the paint so that the paint stores don't close. So now I have, you know, $800 worth of very specific blue paint that I can't use. And mm -hmm. the mural is, you know, it, it's not coming to fruition. And I understand that. And I made the joke yesterday to y'all, like nobody wants to be the business that's like on the headlines, like muralist sneezes on toddler outside right you know, like and I get it like I don't I don't blame them for doing that um but still like that just it just felt like a, a um shift like a big tectonic plate shift like whoosh okay different gotta pivot gotta figure something out um and also like with not being able to access my space I teach one-on-one -on -one lessons and those are that's like my regular income that I can expect I know like regardless of what other like clients or commissions come like I can pay like my apartment <laughs> and mm -hmm. like maybe my car and so like that's a good peace of mind and so I like like we talked about earlier like my paperwork right now has gotten really tight because I know that for me to be able to have the mental space to think about the stuff that I want to create from a genuine source of, of, of like within me like everything else has to be tight and it has to be good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so that's a, it's a gift that I've given myself but it's still like not everybody understands like the the time and commitment that that takes or or that as artists like we're doing all that admin work and you know people think that painters were like drinking wine and chilling out all the time and it's like no we're like running a business <laughs> yeah. and wearing 500 hats yeah y'all can turn this water into something <laughs> so um but yeah it just it, it felt like it just feels like this shift and and like Whitney was saying, so many people are so eager and sweet, but, um, and I saw a lot of my friends transitioning into doing like online workshops and, and different things. And I, I like dipped my toe in, but it just didn't feel genuine. For me. I understand. Yeah. I, I went back to teaching this week and having lessons and I was like, I'm good at what I do. And I'm good at the space that I create with my people. And like, this is a, an energetic field that I create that I can't do on zoom. And um, that has like a monetary value. And I just miss that. So some things can't translate. It's not a one-to-one -one transition. And so I have mm -hmm. to like get quiet in myself and be like, okay, I can make a buck or I can like be really focused on what I want to unroll and not like just, oh my gosh, how do I pay this bill? And, and so it's, it's been this like constant recentering every day for me. Well, Dave, I'm, I'm, um, what, what, what's interesting is that as a photographer, I'm all, I'm, I'm also a wedding photographer right? Mm -hmm. What season is it right now? Oh, yeah. It's outside season right now, man. Oh, this is it. So, oh, yeah. you know, once you have your time budgeted, you know, like, like Bree said, it's not even so much the chunk of money. It's your time. I'm telling everyone else, no. No. Right? Yeah. So money that could have been in resources that, that, that could have been in-house, um, you know, I'm like, no, no, no. Because, you know, once I book a wedding, that's me. You got me the whole time. I don't do two mm -hmm. and three things, you know, on a wedding day. And there's um, residencies, you know, that um, shut down um, institutions and, you know, universities. And I'm like, uh, okay, you know, fine. You know, we're, we'll keep going. A lot of my work is done outside. Literally, mm -hmm. we can't go outside, mm -hmm. right? My work is done outside. Like, Bree, me, you and me, we're outside, <laughs> right? A lot of things, you know, we're outside. And um, if you can't go outside, especially around other people, you've got to switch up another pivot, right? So it's like pivot, 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 and you just keep going. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it gets exhausting. And um, what's interesting about that part is that we need our brains at, at, at full capacity to create. If you're worrying about mm -hmm. bills, if you're worrying about um, you know, all these other things, it's difficult for you to think of other ways to be creative. 
it's difficult for you to think of, well, by yourself, you know, well, maybe, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. Well, that's fine if you're on a hundred, right? If you're, if you're functioning at a hundred percent, most of us aren't like that, right? Because of anxiety, right? I mean, most of us as creatives already, we already got enough stuff going on. You know, that's why we're so good at what we do because we absorb so much. Well, that's while right. we absorb, we have to deal with it. So right. there's been a lot of that going on, man. Um, and just trying to figure out like, where's the back end and how do we stay afloat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting ready to go to, um, do, to review the survey results, but real quick, uh, we've had a real like sobering kind of like real tough nitty gritty, um, conversation kind of heavy, but I want to, I want to get lightning round real quick. Um, give me one good thing that has come out of the pandemic for you guys. One good thing. One good thing. One good thing. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> dig for it. Dig for it. If you ain't thought about it, you know what I'm lightning saying? Lightning round. Like, <laughs> lightning round. Crickets. Who wants to go first? <laughs> um, I have never spent this much time in my apartment and I've never spent this much time at with my dog. And I have That's been cool. like working out and my apartment is so clean. <laughs> These floors <laughs> yeah. are washed. Everything is dusted. <laughs> but it feels good because it's like I that always got pushed to the end of the day and, and like I feel very connected with myself and um, I'm happy about it because I deserve my own attention. Yes. Amen. Um, we co-sign and that's it. Oh, um, so go for it, Alvin. Okay, okay. So check it. I, for the first time in my life, I own plants. I mean, multiple plants. And oh, they are plant alive. dad. Hold on. Okay. They are alive, though. They're flourishing. Okay. They're growing. <laughs> guess what else I can do? See, I've been in relationships my whole life, right? My whole life. I've been a man. I mean, I had my first child when I was 18. So I've been a grown man my whole life at 45 now. So there were some things I really didn't really learn to love, right? Like, you know, provide and do all these other things, but there were other things that I just didn't know how to do. Guess what I know how to do now and well? I can cook. <laughs> I can cook, bro. I can get down, right? Oh, so you, we, we ain't talking about the George Foreman now. No, you, you, no, you know no, I can get down. I'm talking about recipes. Okay. All right. I'm talking about made from scratch. I can bake. I can get down. <laughs> okay. Okay. He said he can bake. That's a good, oh, that's a big I'm one right building. there. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother. Okay. <laughs> Y'all here. <laughs> For sure. Whitney, what you got? Honestly, um, the same thing with, with both of you guys. Um, really just taking care of me. Um, I have never played sports in my whole life. I've been a clumsy my whole life. Like, super embarrassing clumsy, like, falling down the stairs in middle school, high school, like, in front of everybody, right? So I decided, you know what? Let me try to get my core together. So I got into yoga. Okay. So uh, but yeah, just practicing yoga and also I'm trying to eat better. I'm, I'm trying. It's, it's a challenge. You know, the fridge is like two steps. Yeah, it's right there. Yep. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm being more aware of what I eat sometimes. Okay, it's a process. But um, really outside of that, just, just relaxing. I mean, now that I've learned, like, you know what? This virus is going to be around for a minute. I'm, I'm not going to let that, you know, put that extra push or that anxiety on myself. If I don't want to paint today, I don't have to. Nothing 100%. wrong with that. So I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this time as a vacation in a way. Mentally and creative wise, I mean, it's unfortunate that this happened, but I'm learning more about myself and I'm getting my body together and definitely brainstorming, you know, other business ideas and things that I want to do. So, and then, you know, being around good friends and family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Trying to do what we can with, with, with the 10 people limit. So, <laughs> right, right, for sure. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and push to a uh, finishing comeback and we'll uh, go over those survey results. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dave. So, yeah, we're going to switch gears for a moment and discuss the results of that audience survey. Please keep in mind that these results are only based on the audience members who completed the survey. So, our first question was, are you an artist or a creative? So as you can see here, we have a majority of 63% of surveyors who consider themselves artists and creatives. And we have 37% of our surveyors who are con um, consumers of art instead. Our second question was, has your mental wellness been affected by the current pandemic? Again, we have a majority of about 85% um, who selected that yes, their mental wellness has been affected. And we have about 15% of our surveyors who stated that their mental wellness has not been affected by the pandemic. Our next question, 
was in what ways would you say the pandemic has influenced your mental well being the most. So here we have a slight majority of 28% of surveyors who said it was it's been the fluctuating of their moods, we have 24% who selected that is that lack of motivation. 12% who selected all of the above. And then we have some of 8% who selected insomnia. And then we have some individual responses, such as um, that it's been positive, a positive thing that they've taken time to under understand themselves and they've become more introspective. And we have a little bit more um, negative ways, um, such as ongoing low grade panic attacks. So the next question, is what creative outlets have been most therapeutic to you during this self-isolation? So we have about 30% who selected that listening to music, as you mentioned, Dave Butler, the um, you know streaming platforms have increased. Um, we have about 22% of surveyors who selected that they're uh, writing and journaling as a form of therapy. We have about 15% who selected that they're creating art. Um, and we have a small percentage who, um, said consuming art. And then we have, of course, some individual responses such as uh, working out and uh, developing new hobbies, connecting with other artists and gardening as a form of therapy. And our final question was, um, have there been any positive outcomes in your life creatively as a result of the pandemic? So we have a majority of about 80, 5%, which is great. Um, we have 15% who selected that they haven't experienced any positive outcomes. But for those who selected that they have, they mentioned things like um, developing their social media content and their vision and their branding. Um, people have mentioned that they've had more time to get studio work done and um, that it's become easier for them to express their feelings in their writing. And they've also had an increase in freelance opportunities actually. So Dave, based on these survey responses and these results, is there something that stood out to you or the panelists? I know for me, it's, it's crazy just seeing people go like, I think people, I think the Brie described that like fluctuation, like very, very well. Like you get an opportunity, like we rarely see how much time we get to actually sit with ourselves. Like this shows us that, right? Like we're able to be distracted. I'm gonna go work. I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm blah, blah. But it's like, no, you have to sit at home. So you have to sit down and really kind of feel and process and deal with all of that information. And I think the survey results that we're getting from the audience um, kind of reflect that as well. And we saw that it's not, it is majority creators, but there are also um, some folks who consider, who don't consider themselves creators or artists as well. And this, they all have, you know, played into that. So um, it's very, that's what, that's what caught me. What about you guys? Fascinating. Oops. Hi. I thought it was absolutely just fascinating. Like, the it was the same numbers for like who has experienced like emotional distress and then who has seen a, a positive outcome for this i think like the same number of people hit yes and no and i think that that's just so telling that like you know you go through these things but like like dave said like you're able to process process them and then there is a positive outcome and i think as artists like we intuitively know that um, like I was talking about the biggest mural that I did on the side of the United Way wall down in Gaston County. It's like, you know, three walls, 4,000 square feet. And I spent probably like 400 hours on it. And it's like to go and to do that kind of work. And I was also producing this like solo show at the same time. It requires a huge amount of meditation. Like I have to like, like go into this zone and then I have to like lift myself out of it so I can talk to people or go to sleep or, in, you know, anything else. But there's this process that I have to like enter and exit and I become really good at entering and exiting so that I can create from a genuine place. And it's exciting to see that other people are kind of starting to understand that there's a cause and an effect there. And those two things aren't separate. And as artists, um, like Alvin was saying, like we do a lot of that emotional labor for the community and that mm -hmm. deserves to be paid as well, not just the product or the experience. And I, I, I think that that could help to pivot people to understanding um, just the crucial role of artists in our community. So it's like, of course that those two things are the same, but um, not that I like wish hardship on people, but I hope that they can see with clarity that, you know, we, we have those skills and those skills are really important. Definitely. Anything stand out to uh, you guys, Alvin, Whitney? Um, looking at um, the amount of art that's being created, right? Um, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna stop playing with us, right? Like they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna 
Yo, they gonna put some respect on our name. Um, art is saving a lot of lives out here, man. Music, food, whether it's culinary arts, whether it's um, watching films, that's art. And um, it's keeping a lot of things at bay. And who are the individuals that create that art? Artists. So to see that, man, um, I'm glad. I'm so glad, I'm glad that's coming from our community. Um, because I think about, okay, how do I show up? You know, like, what do I do? Like, do I just, do I just create, 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 create? No, that's not what I do. That's not what Whitney does. That's not what Bree does. We, we make, we do the best we can with what we have available. Um, I don't see Whitney just doing things just to stay busy, right? I can't imagine Bree just doing something just to be busy. We do it when we feel it and we do it probably just like everyone else. Um, it makes us feel better. Right. So, so to see so many people just getting out and creating, that's a good look. And I'm glad, and I'm glad people, people are utilizing the arts, man, you know, to keep themselves active, not just busy because you can be busy doing anything, being active and keeping mm -hmm. their, their minds uh, sharp. I'm glad to see that. Definitely. I mean, I would just say that overall this, I mean, this virus is, we all know, just horrible, right? It's horrible. It's made me stronger. I'm sure it's made every single one of you guys stronger in some way where you're either able to learn more about yourself, be more disciplined. Like with myself, I feel like I love myself more. I'm taking care of myself in different ways that I never paid attention to. And you're learning to just be okay by yourself. Um, you know, I don't have any family out here in Charlotte. So, you know, I've been surrounding myself with a lot of friends and just, you know, creating deeper friendships. So really at the end of the day, it's, we're learning what's most important. We're putting away those unnecessary distractions. Like I said, we're surrounding ourselves with people that we're, you know, super close to. We're not just hanging out with strangers. You know? So being able to trust people is on a whole nother level because of the virus. And just really somehow, like, like you were just saying, Alvin, being able to listen to music, watch TV, you know, being able to just zone out and forget about the virus. One of the things that I just stopped doing is watching the news. Watching the news, it just, it, it will really just get me so depressed. And it's, it's, it's too overwhelming for me at this time. So I just don't even watch it. And I don't go on the, you know, the media blogs, like the Shade Room and all that. I'm like, you know what? Let me just focus on what I can't control. Let me just focus on what I'm about to eat today and what orders or whatever I got to do. Let's just focus on that. And so with me doing that, it's really just changed how I live my life. It's a lot more carefree and it's, it's not, I don't have as much pressure on myself like I thought I did. So, I mean, really in this, like I was just saying, and compared to what other people were saying in the survey, even though, yeah, they might have more anxiety and be more depressed, they're also creating more. They're doing other things, stepping outside of their comfort zone and, to me, that's just a beautiful thing because 2020 is, is, it's been rough, but like at the same time, there's going to be a lot of new businesses that were created. You know, there's going to be a lot of new relationships. There's going to be a lot of babies at the end of this too. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Hey, look, so we're going to move into, we got some questions in from, from the, from the live chat. Shout out to everybody who's been engaging on YouTube. Um, like they said, press the subscribe button. Um, we're gonna get into some of these questions from from the lot from the shot. This one this, we're gonna veer off just a little bit. It can it's kind of art adjacent. It's, it's me and Alvin's world. Somebody asked specifically Alvin, "What kicks you rocking today?" Man, what? Oh, uh, man. Okay, see. Yes. Okay, so, yep. so switch that switch it on. Yep. You see what I have on, right? So I'm mean, if I would have to stand up. So I have a pair of uh, three quarter Bruno Moglies on. You know, the hard bottom three quarter joints. Oh, okay. So no sneakers. You know, I've got on slacks. You know, a little joint, you know, I mean, so no kicks. I thought about it. I thought about it. What was the what was the, what was the last pair you wore? What you what was the last time you put on some kicks? What was the last thing you pulled out? Um, the last joint. Okay, hold on. You played never mind. Um, I asked you <laughs> how the joint. Okay, no. So okay, I had on I had on the last joints I had on, no doubt. Um, the bread ones. I had those on earlier. Okay. Today. So the Jordan, so the Air, Nike Air Jordan bread ones were the last kicks I had on earlier today before I changed clothes. What are going to be like the ones that you like step out in when this feels like good and done? What are like the best That's ones? a real good question. Ooh, that's a good question. Look, I had the Royals in mind, 
But Dave told me not to get them. He said I didn't really need them. I, I shouldn't really I'm trying to help you out. Them joints is four hundred dollars now, dog. <laughs> They're four hundred dollars now. <laughs> hey, look. Um, I'm gonna take the. Hey, look. I'm gonna. I take the L on that one. I take the L on that one in front of the whole world. I got you, big bro. For sure. <laughs> Um, nice ladies, oh, any nice ladies, nice. any sneaker? Do you guys have any sneaker? Any sneaker, sneaker love over there? No. Yeah, okay. I'm cool. gonna, I'm an Adidas head. I have a like, I don't know, probably twenty okay. thirty pair. But I how many? Pulled. How many breeds? Okay, a lot. Okay, <laughs> a lot. Let me find out. That's what's well, up. It's exactly. the natives in us. We know to go to Bojangles and we can go get the Adidas like sale every summer and fall. Oh, we you're know giving out gems that. now. She's giving out game. Bree's giving out game. But like I didn't go anywhere fun today, so I'm not wearing any cute, any cute anything. Definitely. Y'all are lucky you got a sweater. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word. So okay, another question. Um, someone said they are so inspired uh, when they're at the Gantt. Um, and what can they do now to uh, fill that fulfill that void? Um, as a result of like everything being closed with the museum being closed. So what are some things that they can do to experience art during the pandemic? Since museums, institutions, galleries are closed. I mean, I'll speak up. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So, I mean, a couple of things you can do. Um, Brie has murals all around the world. Like you can see art outside, right? Um, Whitney has art available for sale. You can buy it online from her and it will be shipped to your home. Um, it's not quite an institutional experience, but it's art that you can absolutely support. One, you can just go by yourself and you can look. And the other one is still self-engagement. But um. Art is all around you guys, man. Like um, the Gantt is a, a African American historical, um, you know, center. You know, it's our art. It's for us, by us. But get around some black folks, right? Get around some black folks and create some <laughs> black art. Like that'll do it. I mean, it's not as dope. I mean, look, let's be honest. The Gantt Center is sexy. Like that's one of the sexiest buildings in the city, right? In the state, definitely. But um, so you won't get that experience. But you can be around some black folks and create some black art. That'll Six give you feet apart, bit. though. That'll give you a little bit. But make sure you're dense this in, though, when you're around them people. Six feet apart, wear your mask, Six apart. sanitize Six it a whole nine. Mm-hmm. For sure. Ideas on, on uh, how to engage with art during this time? Bree, Whitney? Yeah, I think I think a lot of, like, same as the artists, a lot of the institutions are pivoting, and they're trying to make, like, I know, like, you can view, like, the Mint online and see some of their other things, and it's like, they're all trying to shift. Um, and but like Alvin said, like the Gantt Center is a it's like a sacred place. It's very beautiful. The light like coming in all on that side is just Look. I love going in there. I love getting ready to teach there. <laughs> like it just feels like a prayer mm-hmm. and it feels really good. And so I think in that same vein, like also remember like when all of this is done or whatever that looks like, like these institutions need y'all support and um just tune into them because they're coming up with like as many creative ways as they can at the very like bare minimum to keep their staff Mm -hmm. but also just to like make those spaces like safe and accessible and like a prayer later and like we we we're we're blessed to have those spaces in the community and like it's it's a big shame that we can't access them because there's not a lot like that so Whitney Whitney you want to add anything well, I mean, of course, the internet. There's, there's art online. Thank God for the internet. But, um, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of black art pages online that you know have a wide variety of other artists that you can literally just click on and support them. Even if you know you're not purchasing something, just sharing, you know, another artist's work is awesome. Or there's a lot of artists that are going on their lives and creating just. To- Watch the creative process has been very therapeutic for a lot of people. So, you know, there's there's definitely a lot of ways to either purchase art, view art, or just support artists in general. But but yeah, I mean, I'm just piggybacking off of what you guys said. But yeah. <laughs> for sure. Okay, so we know that um, you know, Charlotte is a very has a very specific experience being a full-time artist, a full-time creative. Somebody has a very interesting um question here where it says, some countries support artists as pivotal to community welfare. What can we do to change the mythology around artists toward their role as change agents and public servants? So I know like a lot of the work that we do at Hugh House is, is about, you know, connecting dots between public sector, private sector, 
uh, you know, people who are individual artists and creators and run their own businesses and create creating that at a, trying to scale that connection. So, you know, how what are some other ways that we can, um, you know, continue to build those bridges for independent artists, for art collectives and be able to get them tapped in and be viewed properly um, in our mainstream culture here in Charlotte? So if you think about um, the art institutions, um, art in Charlotte isn't under the CMS guide, right? So um, West Charlotte gets the same amount of resources that Myers Park High School does. The difference is the boosters, right? So it's people, but all the money is the same until it comes in from the outside. So institutions aren't created equally in the city. They aren't treated equally. The same thing is with artists, right? I know um, photographers in this city that are in upwards of $10,000 a wedding, right? Photographers, right? There are, I mean, Brie, you know, could tell you, she's seen muralists, you know, that are, that, that are paid tens of thousands of dollars, right? And there are some who are just like, hey, do this for exposure. You know, um, Whitney could probably tell you the same thing. You know, hey, you know, you could do this real quick. It'd be a good look. So supporting it, um, supporting it has to, we have to take it seriously. You know, if we think about um, any time a country um, was captured, the first thing that was taken was the art. It was the art. They took the art, right? They're like, oh, whoa, 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 we need those paintings. We need those vases. We need anything that looks like it might be worth something. So even if the people didn't know what it was, the invaders always did, right? So that's why you see so much art in so many different places where it doesn't belong, right? Mm -hmm. So we, have, we as artists and, and people who support art have to realize it is as valuable as everyone else knows it is. I like that hat too, in the war on creativity. That's hard, that's hard. Ha, it's coming soon, my brother, coming soon. Good eye. Very cool. Alvin, you preaching tonight. I'm just, I'm just saying, you. you <laughs> <happen>. <laughs> it's the truth. Cool, cool, cool. So we got a, a more laid back question too. What's, uh, what do you guys do to, to decompress when you're, when you're not doing anything art related? What are, what are some things that you're doing to relax that aren't art related? I know we talked about yoga already. We kind of talked about, you know, cleaning up and organizing space. Y'all got anything else y'all want to add to that list of things? I know for me, I've been, I've been doing a folding laundry. I don't have no backed up laundry right now. So for me. You know, put on a podcast, get that laundry knocked out, all the drawers is full. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what's keeping me balanced right now. Hmm. Anybody got anything else? Certain things cool. I might not be able to say, but um. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'll say my wine for now. We'll, we'll yeah. do that. Yes. We will say the wine. The wine is a safe answer. We'll yes. 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 Cool. Cool. Um. Okay, we're gonna move and get ready to. Uh, do we have time for more questions? Hold on. Getting lost. Okay, yeah, we got a little bit more questions. One more final question. Cool, cool. Um, let's see, which one of these do we want to hit? Okay, this one's a little a little heavier. Um, so, how do we walk this tightrope between uh, wanting to create beautiful work, socially conscious work, and um, you know, is that one? Is that the same? You know, are those two? Can those two things coexist? especially, you know, in a, in a capitalistic structure where you have to kind of do things for money. I know Brie kind of mentioned this in our previous conversations, but, you know, we're walking that tightrope and, and wanting to make cre create meaningful work, but then you also have to support yourself and it has to be commerce driven. How are you guys finding the balance within your practice um, in those things right now? When I first started, there was no balance. Um, I didn't realize there was an audience for the work I created. You know, I wasn't a, a classically trained photographer. I just went and did the work uh, archived it, curated it, and then made it available. So now, you know, with the pivot, I mean, having having friends like Bree, you know, having friends, you know, like Whitney, who understand the business side, you know, having a friend like you, Dave, who understands the business side, you gotta have some folks around you who, who get it, right? Like you can create it for free if you want to, but oh boy is over there getting to the bag, right? Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to look at, at art as a commodity, right? Even though it feels good, even though, um, you know, it stirs your soul. You know, you have to figure out a way if it's going to be your business, if it's going to be your career, if it's going to be your job, you have to look at it that way. You can't play games out here, especially right now in 2020. There are people who are continuing to eat. They're not any better than you. They're not any smarter than you. They just may have some more information and they're more focused with the information that's been made available. So I'm reading, man. I'm sitting here trying to get all the information I can, man, to get everything correct so I don't starve to death. Right, because being a starving artist in 2020 as a grown man is not sexy. It's not a. It's not attractive. It's a. It, it makes you angry. It makes you bitter. Right. You don't want to be that. Right. You want to have a beautiful smile. You want to eat well. You want to have a full belly, while still creating meaningful art that that makes people around you feel better. 
you know, and that's what we've all been doing. You know, anytime I see Whitney's name, anytime I see Bree's name, anytime I see your name, bro, we're attached to good work. We're not doing stuff that doesn't mean anything, right? This work is changing lives, but we have to continue to have ourselves in a position of power, right? Not, you know, excuse me, excuse me, you know, would you like to buy some art today? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. So make it impactful, make it powerful and make it available. They can coexist. They can absolutely coexist. We've been able to do so. I think um, kind of piggybacking off of that, like I, well, I went through this program sponsored by EMC Arts, which a, like uh, a group of 10 artists uh, did last December. And then a lot of the institutions, including the Gantt, the Mint, the Opera, like all those things went to, through as well. And um, it called Artists as Change Agents. So it reminds me of the last question that was asked, but it really like helped me to articulate this idea that my community centered work is not any less like beautiful or aesthetic or that my like studio work is not any less like meaningful and connected. And like, I, I had this, this Venn diagram that I think for so long I thought were these opposing things. Like I felt like coming on and coming into the mural scene, like I didn't have 20 murals under my belt and it was just like, I'm just gonna call myself a muralist until people start like signing checks and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it worked. And so, but at the same time, it was just like, they're like, they saw that that wasn't my full-time thing. And then the same thing in the teaching field, like, well, she doesn't just teach, uh, you know, I was being brought in to do like the CMS trainings. I did like an all day training for the GAN for their teachers. And it's like, I'm in a room full of teachers who've taught for 30 years. I am not 30 years old and you know so just like navigating that and it's like it's not a detriment I actually exist in this in the middle of that Venn diagram and and if I look at it the right way it's incredibly marketable because I have a skill set that not everyone has so like Alvin was saying like we have to demand and take up space for ourselves because like it doesn't they don't have to be opposing things they can definitely coexist and I, I think from my work as I move away from like um, more commercial work, it doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. I think that there are other things that people want other than just like something that might go on the wall. People crave connection. People crave uncomfortable conversation is like weird as they crave beautiful space. They crave like, you know, intimate settings. And it's like, I can curate mm -hmm. those things and, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be just this like one and done thing. Um, and so I like, I'm leaning into that because I think, you know, the more specific, the more universal and the more specific I get about like what I'm very interested in doing, like the more reward comes back to me. So we got to just take up space and demand it. I love that, Bree. I completely agree with 99.999% of what you guys said. I, mean, I can really just say that it all falls back to having the right people around you as far as you know your family friends or your you know your clients that that support you because I feel like I'm getting to that point with with my own business because a, a lot of my work up to this point was what I thought was sell okay let me just paint this real quick because I know it'll somebody will like it you know it's it's a woman and she got a crown on you know that'll sell I noticed that okay Am I cheating myself? Because for one, I know that my creativity is a lot more than that. And the thing of what I really wanted to create is a lot deeper than that. And I know that that's more challenging. And so I have been very comfortable with me being able to create art that is commercial. And now I feel like I'm at a transition point where I need to push myself creative wise, not creating what I know everyone expects me to create or what I think is, is easy art because we can all create stuff that is similar to what we did a year ago. But as an artist, every single piece that we create, it has to be better than the last one, right? So if I do a painting on Tuesday, everyone's like, so what are you making on Wednesday? I'm like, I just, I just spent 20 hours creating this painting. You better be happy with what I just made. You know what I mean? So having that pressure on you to constantly have to be better than your last piece of work. It, it I mean, it, it really is a, a beautiful, challenging way to just live your life because no one else knows what's up here. You know, and you, you might have your friends and people around you, oh, you should paint this next. You should do this next. Why haven't you done this painting? And I'm like, yeah, it'll sell, but 
that's not really the the vibe or, or really just what I'm passionate about right now. So I definitely feel like, especially with this virus, it's like if, if I was to, to die tomorrow, right? What would be the most impactful piece that I would have that would be in a museum a hundred years from now? Do I have a piece of work that means that much to people to where they would pay, you know, $200 million for? And I can honestly say that I don't feel that I do yet. So me knowing that, I feel like I constantly have to keep in mind that this is my creativity. This is not anyone else's. Whatever I make, whether you like it or not, this is for me. And me knowing that power and me separating myself from everyone else saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that. That's what's going to really propel me and just artists in general, just being able to stay true to themselves and not be so wrapped up into comfortable art or art that's commercial or that we know is going to sell. Definitely. And I think the key yeah, component, the key component from what I'm hearing from all of you guys and what you guys have expressed tonight is about being as artists and being creative, you have to be balanced and diversified. You know, Bria's talked about you had, a, she knows, she knows what's going to pay her bills. She, she's going to teach those classes, but she's also taking things on top of that. Whitney, you talked about, you know, having and owning your own infrastructure and printing things from home. Like that, that brings down the cost of what you're able to produce your art for by so much, which increases your margins and makes you profitable. Alvin, you're talking about, you know, working across weddings, but also doing very impactful, you know, justice based work. So I think that I think that's what I would like to pull out, um, you know, as, as my kind of like last token in, in this conversation is, is I would encourage all of the creatives and artists that are watching right now to, you know, figure out how you can diversify um, your offering and work with different clients and different groups and collaborate with different artists and you know, just think about recontextualizing your work a little bit during this time. Um, so we have reached time. Tonight has been amazing. You guys have been awesome. It's been amazing to chat with you guys. Thank you to the Gantt Center again for putting this on. Um, Bree, would you like to say something to the people before you exit? Yeah. Um, thank you again to the Gantt Center. I'm always just so grateful for every opportunity that they've provided for me and connection in the community. And thank you for you guys. It's been really just honorable to share space. And I appreciate, you know, hearing and being heard. Um, yeah, to the creatives and, and non-creatives who answered no on the survey at home, you're lying, everyone's a creative, we just have to tap into it. And I just encourage you to use this time to step into some vulnerability. And like Whitney was saying, like address the, the formula that you've had, whether you know it or not, we've all been having a formula that we've, we've used for our life before. And this new time, this new life, this new community that we'll be exiting into soon, um, is asking something new for us. So like my friend Chad says, change when things are changing and um, try to enjoy it. We, we have the opportunity to, to enjoy that process. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you for coming again. Have a great night. Miss Whitney, as you head out, last words for, um, for our folks here for our, on, the, on the Gantz Live. Well, for one, this was fun. This was it was fun for me. I felt like I was talking to my cousins on here. So I appreciate all of you guys. This was an awesome and, and I learned a lot, but I would definitely just, you know, want to speak to the creatives. Don't let your yourself get yourself down. You know what I mean? Because man, mental health is so important. It's so important. And, you know, I really just want to make sure that the creatives are not being stuck in the house without the amount of you know, right support with their friends or family. Um, and just remember that this is this is temporary. This virus hopefully won't last forever. And you know, when this stuff is over, man, just go hard, go hard because there's so much opportunity on, on the other end of this, whether it's a new business, a, a new hobby or, or passion, there's, there's gonna be growth. There's gonna be an amazing amount of growth. And so you just have to really hold on to that. And definitely wanna say thank you to the Gantt Center. Y'all are family for me. So we're gonna have a cookout at the Gantt Center next year. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, hey, no look. at the Gantt Center. No, no cookouts, we're not doing that. But, but no, I, <laughs> I love what the Gantt Center does for the community. And I just love the Gantt Center in general, the, the art, the classes, just, just the energy and, and really the support from the community is amazing. And thank you again, Dave. No problem. You, you kept us in line, so so thank you. <laughs> I do what I can with what I got. That's all. That's right. Good. Thank you. <laughs> and then there were two, my brother Alvin.
Oh. What's going on, big dog? Man, we out here, G. For sure. Fire. Last one, man. What you got? What you what you got to say to the people as we close out this uh this introspective conversation with creatives, man? Man, um, okay. What was it? Two years ago, maybe? Has it been two? Yeah, years? year and a half. It's, okay. it's coming on two years. It'll be two years okay. in the fall. Okay, two so, years in the fall, man. So, so real quick, the conversation we had in the parking garage, mm -hmm. right? And um, work can be life changing. Um, dude, everything that's went forward, you know, was because we were um, first given an opportunity, right? And we were obedient, you know. Um, I'm grateful for not just the opportunity, right? I mean, the Gantt, hands down, the platform has changed my life, you know. Um, it made me believe in myself Likewise. more. It made me believe in myself more, you know, um, because I mean, I've, 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 I've um, um, had work in institutions before, right? But the for us, by us is just a little bit different. It hits a little it different, different, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, being able to navigate through that process, man, um, you know, being supported, like that's something a lot of black men don't have. Not just creatives, but black men. Like, it's like, go get it, you know, just figure it out. So um, being able to, to, to do work, you know, on such a high level, man, I mean, winning awards, right? Um, being able to grow as an artist. I mean, if I didn't know what I was doing before, right? I know what I'm doing now. And um, that's because of, of the trust, you know? Cause I mean, that's a word, you know, the Gantt trusted us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I saw something in you um, that I don't think you saw in yourself yet, right? And sometimes that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to pull it out of that person. But guess what? Once they see it, once they feel it, that's it. And um, just 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 being able, man, to just to just work at this level, man, consistently, right? The Gantt hasn't let us go. You know what I mean? We can well, we can't walk in there right now, but uh, <laughs> when it opens up, you know, we're good. We're family. Right. I've never felt that from an institutional level. You know, um, that reminds me of, of, of what university feels like, you know, you know, I mean, you're always a rattler or whatever, right? You know, you're always, um, mm -hmm. you know, a I, ram. A ram. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Um, you know, like, 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 you're always that. So we're family. And um, I can't, I can't thank them enough, man, you know, for the ability to, to run. You know, we weren't held down. We weren't told what to do. Right. We were given um, a task and parameters, you know, but those parameters, man, let us do what we needed to do. And um, I mean, I'm just forever grateful. Yeah, man, for sure. Likewise, I am as well. Like to be able to, and this is kind of weird, right? Like to kind of have this moment, I don't want to prolong. I know we're going over time, but right. you know, it, we're not necessarily getting a chance to actually close it. Like it was extended and then this happened. So we're not, we're not being able, I don't know what the schedule may look like, but I don't, I don't think we're gonna have the opportunity to really to kind of like close it, like the way that we opened it, right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A thousand RSVPs, the whole nine yards and all of that. So. Um, no, nah, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate the Gantt, you know what I mean, to be named, uh, you know, a charlatan of the year in my hometown for doing work to support a community, you know what I'm saying, that that, that needed a voice, um, you know what I mean, and just needed their story to be told, just needed a platform. There's already some amazing things happening over there in Brook Hill, and they just needed, you know, to shine a light on that, the right type of light on that. Mm -hmm. So um, to be a part of such impactful work has definitely changed my life personally and professionally. And like I said, I, I mean, I can't thank you. You can't thank you enough personally. Can't thank the Gantt enough. Um, you know, for that opportunity. Um, it's led to so much more work uh, up until this point. So um, definitely, man. Um, so we want to bring up Afini. She's going to help close everything out tonight. Um, Alvin, thank you for your contributions. Thank you. Um, and um, pass it off to Afini. We'll close out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you so much, Alvin, for your words and for mentioning the importance of support. We really appreciate you guys for that. Um, speaking of support, our text to give option is one accessible way you can support the Gantt Center. By texting 345-345, you help in continuing vital programs and conversations such as our Unmasked series. Without your continued support, we would not be able to fulfill our mission and we are definitely grateful for any contributions, any donations. Um, on behalf of the Gantt Center, I appreciate you all for tuning in and for your perspectives. A special thank you again to tonight's facilitator, Dave Butler. And of course, thank you. And as always, be safe and take care. Good night.